Welcome back guys, Mad King Kodoro here with another bit of technology from the past that was dug out of the trash. It is a Data General Dasher D200 serial terminal from 1979. Holy cow, this thing looks freaking cool as hell. Um, I couldn't believe it when I found it. Uh, could you imagine finding that <laughs> in the trash? Uh, this is like space age technology here. This is pretty crazy looking stuff, pretty heavy stuff here. Um, so, unfortunately, it doesn't work, uh, to the best of my knowledge, because it doesn't have a keyboard, and there's probably something wrong with the inside main board, because I'm not even getting a flashing cursor when I turn on. It's not, you know, turning on the screen, I don't hear it go, and power on the screen, uh, like you would with a normal CRT. Uh, I'm not hearing anything. So, I will just have to go over it and show you it in as much detail as I can um, because it is really freaking cool, as I said before. So, if we go ahead and look at it, you've obviously seen the curves and styles and designs here. It is typical 70s to the max. It is hardcore 70s technology here. And uh, it's even got the light blue on white in the back here. We move it down a bit you can see there are dip switches to set the baud rate and uh, parity there is a keyboard plug but unfortunately it is proprietary and above that we have more information device rating um, serial number model number and the copyright obviously and a little disclaimer down here, as all good companies do shove those things on there. Now, I've turned around back around to the front so you can see here that it has a switch or a knob. And I'm not sure what that is. I think that is your brightness contrast. But I think it is also your on-off. Kind of like the old 70s car lights used to do that. You'd pull them out to turn them on, pull it once for the uh, runners, and then second for the uh, headlights and rear lights and uh, <laughs> so that is pretty cool for a computer to have something like that uh, I've gone ahead and remove the screws that held in the top here they go into the bottom here I'll lift it up so you can see they go into the bottom here so you can not have the top open when you don't want it to now to open the top you just go ahead pull that guy off, comes right off, no problem, and then push this back in there and hope it doesn't get caught on there, which it is, so you gotta kinda finagle it a bit. Ah, there we go. And then you see these guys? Locks in there, blam! It's like a car hood. How cool is that? Here, let me back up the camera so you can really see it in detail. Okay, like I did before, Pull it out a bit so it gets around that knob. Come on, lift up. It snaps into place just like a car hood. <laughs> Isn't that freaking awesome? So easy to work on. Such a great design. I love that. Okay, so I've gone mobile here to kind of show you the system up close as best as I can and try and point out a few things that I've been able to identify. Um, but to be honest, I don't know a whole lot about this thing. Uh, it remains to be a sort of mystery. Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> uh, but anyway, this is the switch I was talking about before. Um, as we turn it right there. I'm not quite sure exactly if it does both or that, but I suspect it does. That is a PC speaker kind of beeper thingy that uh, beeps when it does system diagnostics. It'll actually beep when it doesn't have the keyboard and a few other things. If we move over to the side here, you'll see a copyright date of 1978. Um, but from what I saw on the internet, it should be from like 1979 is when they first really appeared on the market. There is a central like processor here that uh, controls things. And, um, I don't know, is it wet, or what is that? No, it's just a stain of some kind. It kind of wiped off. But anyway, um, you can see there that there's a Motorola chip. 
of some sort. I do not know exactly what, unfortunately. Um, information on these things is a little scarce. Uh, some other chip there. Undoubtedly, there are some other important chips hidden underneath here. But this plasticky kind of cardboard bit is to protect the motherboard from shorting out on that guy on the CRT, which is the, I forget what it's called, like static cap or something like that, I, I forget, but I know it's dangerous, that's what you get killed on, and that's what you have to discharge when you discharge the monitor. Back here is the power transformer to go from 240 volts AC to whatever this thing needs exactly, and it's all right on the board, there's no separate unit or anything. Back here you see the uh, parallel port, or serial port I should say actually, um, and the dip switches, and then way back in the back, back there, let's see if I can see it, there we go, you see the proprietary keyboard connector, so no other keyboards are going to be able to work with this thing. Over here is the monitor controls and uh, just general uh, electronics that control the monitor. Um, I assume this is probably like horizontal control, vertical hold, and I have no idea. Probably brightness and contrast, actually. You know, brightness. Uh, and uh, other than that, though, there really isn't a whole lot to say about this thing. Um, some more warnings on here. A lot of warnings, actually. And some other markings. CRT main, uh, let's look at the CRT itself here, you can see, and this bezel here comes off with two screws on the side, uh, it's quite easy to remove, it just comes right off, and I did that when I cleaned this thing, because uh, it was a lot dirtier than this when I first got it. Turns out there's one more thing I just noticed actually, and that this screen has severe burn-in, hopefully you can see that, it's hard to see, isn't it? But that is certainly a logo. And that is ABS, which stands for, if I can see it on here, let's see, Apollo Business Systems. And that says United Airlines. <laughs> Pretty cool. Let's see, what does it say up here? Uh, so, select something. AI, go, see, no. I don't know what that says, man. No idea. Big out. Big out. Big in, big out. Big. I think it's just... It's on text. But anyway, um, so yeah, apparently this was used by United Airlines, and the software they ran was Apollo Business Systems, or something of that nature. Interesting. <laughs> kind of cool. But yeah, that's unfortunately the only thing I can display on this, because it doesn't work, as I said before. Hmm. Oh well. So yeah, it is. There we go. The latest acquisition of mine, a Data General Dasher D200 serial terminal from 1979 or 78 if you're going to go by the copyright date. No, this guy doesn't want to seem to go back on there. Come on. There we go. Put the happy little button back on there. And um, back where he lives, I mean. <laughs> go Bob Ross on you guys. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I'm Mad King Corduroy. Uh, tune in regularly for more computer things. I have another typewriter I'm working on, and that will be in the upcoming videos. Please don't forget to subscribe and like. I like to get feedback, so feel free to leave comments also. It kind of lets me know where my audience is. And uh, I like to kind of, you know, chit-chat with you guys about this stuff. A lot of times I don't know what the stuff is, and you guys come in and kind of enlighten me, which is really, really cool. Um, so, yeah, I like hearing from you guys. So, 
Subscribe, like, comment, and don't forget to check out the Facebook page for Transcendental Airwaves because I provide regular updates and uh, just kind of general commentary on other junk on there just to uh, kind of liven it up a bit, you know, to communicate with you guys in other ways. So, uh, yeah, thank you for watching.